experiment number two. So in today's experiment, our aim is to study the frequency response of JFET amplifier. So this is the given JFET amplifier to us. It's a self bias. Uh, I mean, um, it's a self bias configuration, and it's a common source amplifier basically, right? So you we we have over your input coupling capacitor CC1 value, 0 0.01 microfarad. CC2 value is 0.5 microfarad. CS value bypass capacitor value is 2 microfarad. And RG value is 1 mega ohm. RAD is 4.7 kilo ohm. RS is 1 kilo ohm. And VDD is plus 20, right? And we have to select the end channel JFET in LT spice as 2 and 3, 8, 1, 9. And uh, the end channel JFET parameters are VP is equal to minus 3 and IDSS is 11.736. So I will exactly know how do we got this value, right? So let's begin. So there are three parts, uh, there are two parts in it. First, we have to do part one, uh, frequency response. And uh, part two is like common source amplifier without bypass capacitor. And part one is with bypass capacitor. So for both the parts, we have to do the frequency response, right? So yeah, so let's begin now. Let me do one change over here. Okay, so let's begin with directly by simulation. So let's build up the circuit. So we have to go to the library. Let me keep the circuit open over here. A smaller version of it so that it's visible for us. Okay. So let me build up the circuit. So I'll go to the components. I'll type NJF. NJF is N channel MOSFET. NJF is my N channel JFET. So I will place the JFET onto the circuit schematic and I'll press escape. Fine. JFET NJF. This is N channel JFET. Now I have to add components, so I will just slightly uh, zoom out a little. Then I have to add three registers. So one register over here, one will be over here, and another will be over here. So three registers I have added over here. You can connect them together. You can zoom out a little and quickly connect them together. This is the gate terminal and this is the RG. Then we have to connect the ground also. So let me add the ground over here. So remember that we have to always connect the ground wherever it is applicable. Yeah. Now I will require a VDT of 20 volt. So what you need to do is again go to components and type voltage. So I've typed voltage and I've added over here. Let me add the VDD supply over here. Okay. So I'll connect this wire over here to the ground. So here I've added the ground. Fine. Now let us do some naming part over here. This is VDD. So I will right click and name it as VDD. Its value is 20 volt. So I'll right click over here and I give it 20 volt. Similarly, this register is RD. So I'll rename it as RD. And this resistance value is 4.7K. So 4.7K I have given. This is RS. And its value. So we'll give 1 kilo ohm over here. This is RG. And its value is 1 mega ohm. So 1 mega ohm is written as 1 MEG. So remember that if you want to write mega, it will be one capital M E G, small E G. Okay. So the biasing part is done now. We have to add the coupling capacitors and the AC source. So we have a capacitor over here. We can add it like this. This is my bypass capacitor. Then I have to rotate this capacitor. I will press on the keyboard Control R. And when I press Control R. Right. 
so at the output side we have one register also of 2.2 kilo ohm so we'll use that register also so here is your register of 2.2 kilo ohm yeah so now let me complete the circuit i will require a ac supply also so i'll go over here type voltage i click on okay and add a voltage source over here this will act as my input ac now i have to connect them together quickly so we can quickly connect them we can add a separate ground over here then i'll connect the output coupling capacitor and rl and then the finally the bypass capacitor to the ground yeah so these connections are done now i will add the grounds so one ground over here one ground over here this is termed as v in so i'll name it as v in this is cc2 input coupling capacitor its value is for me it's given as 0.01 for you all the values will be given in your in your write up so please refer those values only this is 0.01 microfarad then uh, this is coupling capacitor 2 its value is 0.5 microfarad okay and this value is this value over here is r i mean this is called as rl and its value is writing 2.2 kilo ohm its value is 2.2 kilo ohm then we have this capacitor cs bypass capacitor cs and its value is 2 microfarad for me it's given as 2 microfarad okay so all the uh, component we defined now everyone is here with me you all have completed up till here please respond yes or no so just a minute okay fine now first we are doing the frequency response so what we will do is i will right click on the ac i'll go to advanced and here small signal ac analysis ac amplitude i will give it one ac amplitude i will give it one and click on okay so my input is also defined and amplifier is ready for frequency response analysis okay next the jfet so you have to right click on the jfet click on pick new jfet and select the first model 2n3819 2n3819 okay that is what we want and click on okay so your circuit is ready now just observe carefully i'll give you all time till then i will mark the input and output i will label the node of input and output so let me do that quickly i'll take extend this wire slightly over here so that i can mark input so here it is v in underscore your name you all right i'm writing my name over here so right click on the wire label net then you can name it as v in underscore your name and define input port okay similarly on the output side also do the same thing right click on the wire label net v out underscore your name and define the port as output and click on okay fine so only for frequency response i will give you all time to do it along with me after that i will just show the steps and you all have to uh, you know complete the same so you don't have to match the speed which 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 i am doing initially i will help you out but yeah so now can anyone this much is ready yes can i go ahead with this 
everyone has completed up till here please immediately respond yes sir yes sir okay now uh, one more thing which is there left out how to how will i get to know what is my vp value now if you have studied jfet then you know vp is your pinch of voltage and idss is your maximum drain to source saturation current right so how will i get to know this parameters from this jfet so for that you have to right click on this jfet right right click on this jfet click on pick a new device and there you see spice model is written for this jfet so click carefully on that i mean uh, look carefully into that here note down these values beta so your beta this is not the beta of the bjt yeah this is different so beta value is 1.304 milli so just write down that value so i will take a right click over here go to draft go to this thing comment how much 1.30 how much was that 304 milli e raised to minus 3 okay so i've added that value of beta let's just let me confirm yeah 1.304 milli next is if you go ahead you will search lambda is also given 2.25 milli okay and vto is also given uh, minus 3 so i'll write that next is uh, lambda is given to us go to the next line and write lambda value is 2.25 milli and what was the value of vto vto was minus 3 volt right so this is the data given to us but from here how we will know that how, what is the value of vp and what is the value of idss now just remember this everyone listen carefully i will let you know now that what is what so basically vto internally is called as vp only vto is internally called as vp only so basically your vto is nothing but your pinch of voltage only okay your pinch of voltage vp is nothing but vpo internally and how do we measure uh, idss so there is a relation in spice and idss is related as follow so beta is given by idss this is the formula beta is given by idss divided by vp square okay that's the formula given to us right so someone can calculate idss from here idss will be beta square beta value we got it from the model statement So someone please cross check this and let me know how much is the IDSS value. Please cross check fast. Use your calculators. IDSS value will be beta into VP square. VP is minus three. Quickly tell me please. One point three zero four milli into C square that is nine. How much is that? So eleven point seven three six. Eleven point seven three six unit is. What's the unit? Ampere, milli ampere. Milli ampere. Okay, understood. so here is here uh, this is how we calculate idss and vp fine so this why does idss and vp is required this is required for your calculation so i guess you all are also getting the same thing so the at least the beta the jfet parameters are same for us uh, i mean n jfet parameters are same for us okay fine so now let us now uh, concentrate on the frequency response so for doing the frequency response what we will do is we'll have to vary the input signal frequency in this range 100 hertz 300 500 700 and 1k so in the range of 1357 so 1k to 7k then 10 kilohertz then uh, 10 to 100 kilohertz then 100 to 1 megahertz from 1 to 10 megahertz from uh, 10 to 100 megahertz and uh, from 100 to 500 in the steps of uh, 1357 
so already have the uh, have the table for you all ready with for a BZD amplifier. Similarly, you have to do it for a uh, JFET amplifier. Now let us check it out how to perform this analysis. So here you have to click on simulate, click on run. So for frequency response, you have to select AC analysis. Type of sweep will be decade. Number of points you can select 100. Start frequency will be 100. Uh, stop frequency you can give it as 100 megahertz or 500 megahertz. 500 capital MEG. Okay, and then click on OK. So the moment you do that, your X axis from 100 hertz to 100 megahertz to 500 megahertz will appear onto your screen. So this is a semi log plot. Okay, your X axis is log, logarithmic, and Y axis is a normal uh, plot. So here, what I will do, I will right click. I'll click on add trace and I'll plot V out. So this is my frequency response. Uh, please try it out on yours. I mean, in, in, in for your circuits, see whether you got a response like this and quickly confirm if you do. So here I'm getting the face plot also and magnitude plot also. So I'll right click over here and I delete the face plot. So here is my frequency response of Jifford amplifier. Immediately as you get get the frequency response, please immediately confirm. So that I can proceed. How many did get the frequency response? Please inform. Your values will be different because your uh, all the component values are different for y'all. So please confirm someone. If you have if you have got this frequency, anyone got the similar frequency response? Please do inform immediately. Any problem you all are facing? Anyone? Please confirm yes, immediately. Yes, sir, got it. Okay, very good. So others who are not getting it, please try it. I'll move forward. So up till here, I will be, uh, I mean, uh, your, your speed and my speed will match. Now this point onwards, I'll be slightly quicker. So you can note down the readings later, but know the technique right now. Okay, so after you get this, after you got this frequency response, the next thing you do is, you take the maximize the screen and take the print screen of your, uh, in your in your laptops or computers and then also take the print screen of the frequency response. OK, so do that quickly. I'll give you 30 seconds to do that. Quickly take the print screen of your circuit as well as your waveform, the frequency response. OK. So right now what we have done is, see, you will say that the, uh, you know, this is the gain versus frequency. So why I'm plotting V out? Remember, the gain is given, gain is basically AV, right? Gain is denoted by AV, standing for A, A stands for gain and V stands for voltage gain. So voltage gain will be given by V out upon V in. Now if you remember correctly, V in we have given amplitude as 1. So V out upon 1 will be V out itself, right? So when we we are not nothing but we are plotting gain in db only okay i hope that this point is clear and we have got this type of a plot this is my frequency response of a jeffer amplifier where x axis is the log scale and y axis is the gain in db and that is what exactly we are getting y axis is not in log scale it's a linear scale okay uh, in db so what now what you have to do for all this frequency, you have to note down the gain in dB. Okay? Only gain in dB first you note down. So what I will do, I'll take a cursor over here and I move this cursor to 100 hertz. So at 100 hertz, my value is, as you can see over here, 3.83 dB. Okay? 3.83 dB. It's okay, slight variation here and there is there. So this value is 8.8, I mean 3.83 dB. So let me see if I can correct this value.
तो क्या है थ्री पॉइंट ए थ्री डी बी ओके ना नेक्स्ट आई हैव टू चेक इट एट फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ लेट से सेवन हंड्रेड हर्ट सो एट सेवन हंड्रेड हर्ट वॉज द वैल्यू यू हैव टू ड्रैक दिस पॉइंट एल्टर इट इज क्लोजर टू सेवन हंड्रेड It's twelve point four nine nine. This is twelve point five only, so that is correct. Next, I will check it as ten kilohertz. So at ten kilohertz, what's my value? So this you can see clearly. Nearby ten kilohertz, which also do. So ten point zero four kilohertz, its value is thirteen point three zero eight. Thirteen point three zero seven or three zero eight, both will do. So it's actually fine. So let me change to three zero eight. Okay, then I'll check it at a higher frequency. Let's say one megahertz. Sir. So at one megahertz. Yes, yes. Sir, uh, we are not getting this kind of plot. Our plot is a little unsymmetric. Ha. Huh. Meaning that uh, I mean uh, what you can do is. Where it is asymmetric on the right hand side or the left hand side? Ah, uh, it is seen on the right hand side more, and left hand side is uh, not visible kind of. Left hand side is not visible, so left hand side yeah, is yeah. visible up till here only. Up so till yeah, up till is... in your diagram, somewhat up till eleven point seven decibel. Yeah. No, 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 no. That is not say. You will get differently only. What I am saying is, yeah, yeah, is it, it is falling the, down? Yeah. Falling no, down no, and here at higher. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right, sir. So uh, you tell me. I will draw a, a sample graph. You tell me how does it look like? Sure, sir. Does it look like this? Yes, sir. Exactly. Oh, so what you do is you start from ten uh, hertz then. Uh, if it is looking 10? like this, now start from ten hertz. Ha, ten, ten yeah. hertz. And then you have to take the reading from ten hertz. See, my readings and your readings will not be same. That's what I'm trying to say. So then, if you do that, you will get a proper graph like this. Okay, sir. Please check. Please confirm. Quickly confirm, please, if you are getting this graph, this type of a graph now. For one megahertz, for one megahertz over here, let me uh, check it out. Yeah. Uh, okay. Before so disturb. Yeah. So for one megahertz, my value is thirteen point three one three. Thirteen point three one dB. So this is correct. So the student which have passed have got the graph properly now. It's symmetric. Have you checked it? You have to just replace this starting frequency yes, by ten hertz. Yes, sir. It is symmetric. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, good. So carry on. So all what you need to do is you might have to start from ten hertz. Ten thirty. 50 hertz, 70 hertz, and then come to 100. So little bit four readings more you have to take. Okay. Yeah. So now we have to also note down the V out voltage. So to note down the V out voltage, basically, let me test it out over here. First, it changes or no? But this will show the voltage up till. Uh, Yeah, maximum range. So what I will do is, uh, eventually I have to give AC amplitude as 800 millivolt. So what I will do, I will go over here, change to 800 millivolt, click on OK, then I'll simulate again. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah. So let me simulate again. I'll got a graph. 
I got a graph. So basically, I'm measuring V out now. Okay. So here you right click, go to logarithmic, and then click on OK. So this way, this technique, you can utilize to measure the V out value for a given V value. Okay. See, we have determined the gain very easily. Over here, when when we were measuring gain, our input was basically one volt. But when we are measuring the V out value over here, what are we doing? Eventually, in transient analysis, we are going to take input as 800 millivolt, right? So here, what you do is we you take it as 800 millivolt instead of one volt. Okay, that's the only point. Uh, for AC as 800, uh, one volt. I've taken 800 millivolt, and I've simulated it again. And I change the x axis, uh, y axis to logarithmic. So now I will take this take this reading. So I'll go over here. Uh, point two five four. So here I'm getting one point two four three. So I'll change it to one point two four three. So that's the value I'm getting at hundred hertz. Then at 700 hertz, I have to measure. You all take this. Next, I mean, uh, do yeah, around 700. Nearby 700, you are getting 3.77, 3.377. So let me take it down. Yeah, 3.377. That's totally fine. So here will be kilohertz. So at 10 kilohertz, how much is the value? Okay, at 10 kilohertz, the value is 3.702. So here also it's 3.702. That's correct. Now I'll take it at 1 megahertz. Yeah. Take what frequencies? Huh? Let me take it at 1 megahertz. It's 3.704. is the value. Okay, so that's correct. Frequency response plot. Okay, and all those readings for common source amplifier with bypass capacitor present. So remember, your bypass capacitor was present over here. Everyone understood. You have to take the reading for all the cases over here, all the input signal frequency. There are lot of readings you have to take to that point plot. Everyone understood what to do? Any doubt over here? For part two, you have to do common source amplifier without the bypass capacitor. So for that, what you need to do is you take a wire and cut that wire from here. Okay, to uh, be, you know. You can easily uh, do the common uh, source amplifier without bypass capacitor. Entire procedure remains the same for that. Okay, just cut the wire from here. Right now, I am not doing it. I am leaving up to you to complete that part. So there will be a separate table for part two, that is common source amplifier without bypass capacitor CS, and same procedure is to be followed. Okay. Clear up till here. Anyone have? Any query? Anyone? Any any query up till now? Okay. So now I will show you all how to measure the bandwidth. So again, I'll go over here. I'll give it back to one. And then I'll simulate. So I'll go to simulate over here. Click on run. Let me uh, put it in this mode. Okay, so here I'll again go over here and go to decibel. Okay, so here what is the highest decibels which I can see? Thirteen point three one. So what I have to do? How to measure it? Last time I've told you all how to do it. So let's say my maximum value of gain is thirteen point three one dB. So I have to go three dB down and I have to extend the lines on the parallel to the x-axis. 
and then bifurcate this line over your FL and FH, where it intersects this curve. Okay, I have to go 3 dB down and mark FL and FH. So let me do that quickly. So here it is 13.31. So I have to go till 10.31. So how you can do is you can maximize this part and you can minutely you know change this 10.31 you can go okay again you can maximize this part so 10.31 yeah 10.31 307 it is okay slightly i will go 10.31 uh, okay yeah 10.3109 it's 314.97 so it's very very close to 315 hertz so this becomes my fl frequency okay so yeah i can click over here zoom full extent and i can do the similarly on the right hand side part over here okay so again i'll go over here and go to 10.31 i can maximize this part for better accuracy 10.31 I can maximize this more. Yeah, 10.310 I want. Yeah, so 174, close to 175, um, mega 174.96. So yeah, here I got earlier as 174.96. Here I'm getting it as 174.35 megahertz. So very, very uh, close it is. And that's how you record FH. Okay, your FH will be over here. Higher cutoff frequency is uh, 170 around 175 megahertz, and low cutoff frequency is 315. For my case, for your case, it will be different. Okay, so this is how I measure FL and FH. Then bandwidth will be FH minus FL. That is close to around 174 megahertz only, because they are subtracting 315. 315 is a very small number compared to uh, 174 into 10 is to 6. So approximately a bandwidth will be equal to the higher cutoff frequency only. Any doubts over here? Okay, clear about this. So you have to measure the bandwidth with capacitor and then without capacitor. That is unbypassed part. Okay, now let me move on to the next part. Next part is my transient response. So next part is transient response. Over here, what we have to do is, uh, let me do one change over here. VS has to be 800 millivolt, V in. Okay. So for transient response, we have to measure V in versus time and V out versus time. Okay. And uh, here, if you notice carefully, in the plot, around 10 times, 10 kilohertz my gain is constant okay as you can see around 10 kilohertz my gain remains constant so i can safely take the frequency of the transient response as 10 kilohertz fine so let me show you how to do that this was frequency response now we are moving to the transient response so for transient response we will take input as 800 millivolt peak to peak and frequency as 10 kilohertz because at 10 kilohertz the gain of the amplifier is constant so first we will do with bypass capacitor. Next we'll do without bypass capacitor. Okay. So how to do it? First of all, I have to delete this dot AC, dot AC, and then I'll right click over here. I'll delete this one volt from here. I'll uncheck this part. Go to sine wave. DC offset will be zero. Amplitude should be 400 millivolt. Peak value. You write over your peak value. Peak to peak value will be 800 millivolts and frequency will be 10 kilohertz. Just observe. Don't do it along with me right now. Okay. So for 800 millivolts, you have to take over your 400 because it's the peak value. Then I'll click on simulate. Then I click on run. Now, what stop time I will give? If you take one divided by 10 kilohertz, that is one upon time, right? That will be uh, 0.1 millisecond. So I have to get, uh, let's say, uh, three plots. Three uh, cycles should be there. So I write over here 0.3 millisecond and I click on OK. Right. So blank screen will appear. Here I will right click. I'll go to add trace. I'll plot V in first. Next I will plot V out. So as you can see, I'm getting three cycles. 
okay sorry for that i'll delete this plane in the same plot i will plot v out so here it is as you can see it is completely out of phase so this is my input output transient response analysis for my jfet amplifier is this clear to you any doubts in this that's how you do your transient response v in versus time and v out versus time next i have to measure the peak to peak value so one technique is i can measure the peak to peak value by measuring the peak value over your positive peak and then adding it to the negative peak but this is not so accurate so what i will do i'll write some dot measure statement so i right click over here go to draft go to spice directive i'll start writing the dot measure statement we have done it last time also so i'll write dot measure v in peak to peak so v in is the uh, you know reserved variable where will i'll store that value peak to peak pp is peak to peak then i'll name the label v of v in underscore the name so this will store the peak to peak value of uh, input next will be dot measure v out peak to peak v of v out underscore the name so this will store the value of peak to peak value of the output in the variable v out next is dot measure i'll write gain param now i want to calculate directly the gain so I'll write over here v out divided by v in so these statements will make sure that it will directly give you the v out value and the gain value so let me do that again so i have to run over here and then to view this values you have to go to view and you have to go to spice error log so here it is directly i am getting this values over here right now okay so uh, that's how you measure them that's how you measure the gain as well as the v out value is this understood everyone how to do this yes sir yes sir okay so uh, please start with your work yeah let me show you the uh, simulated value right now so in my case the simulated value came out to be the gain came out to be 4.6 see uh, this limitation of uh, spice is that this uh, dot measure statement is that it will give you the magnitude only but in reality we have a negative sign why because input and output are out of phase when they are out of phase the gain will be negative so i am getting 4.609 that's close and uh, here uh, at the simulated v out value is uh, minus 3.6842 okay so that's how you measure it similarly you will do it for unbypassed capacitor i mean without bypass capacitor right so for without bypass capacitor what you will do just uh, remove the capacitor from here and then measure it again okay we will do it later but first now show it to you how to uh, check the theoretical gain now theoretical gain and theoretical v out value so let me do that right now so for that what you need to do is you need to do the calculations for vgsq idq gm and ro okay so you do the calculation for vgsq idq gm and ro so these are the calculations over here this is the dc analysis so these are the normal steps so vgs is given by minus id rs so rs is 1000 for my case over here then id formula is given by ids is into 1 minus vgs upon vp the whole square so i substituted my values which i got over here and i, I think for y'all also it will remain the same for this case for this statement your your rs value might be different Then you solve it quadratically. You will get two values of VGS. Select the one which is greater than VP. Then similarly, you will get the value of ID. So in my case, I got the value of ID as minus uh, 1.8 and IDQ as 1.874 milliampere. So once you get VGS and ID, you can calculate a uh, small signal parameters GM. So GM formula is mod of twice IDS as divided by VP into one minus VGSQ upon VP. Okay. so these are the formulas you all can take the print screen of it fine so i solved gm so gm came out to be 3.126 milliampere per volt and ro ro is the output resistance of the jfet device it is formula is given by 1 upon lambda idq now lambda value you remember we have taken in the model parameter as uh, as you can see over here 2.25 
billy. So 2.25 point to 10 is to minus 3 was lambda value. So here I have calculated RO as 1 upon uh, lambda IDQ, which is coming out to be 237.16 kilo hertz, uh, kilo ohm. So here I have written the calculated values. Now how to absorb the simulated values? Let us see that. So over here, what you need to do is you just to comment the dot tran. So for commenting, just add a semicolon in the front. And then again, if you simulate, simulate, click on run, ending point, and then click on OK. You'll get a screen. Close that screen. You go to view, go to spice error log, and here you will see all the values for the JPET. Okay. So here you see the value of uh, IDQ is 1.8. 1.83 volt, I mean milliampere. Sorry, VGS is uh, 1.83 milliampere. Uh, IDQ is uh, 1.83 milliampere. VGS Q is 1.83 minus 1.83 volt. Then GM value is 3.12 milliampere per volt. Here it is, and RO value. Now here it is given GDS. Basically, your GD, RO will be 1 upon GDS. So if you do 1 divided by 4.02 into 10 is to minus 6, you will get 248. Okay. So what I'm saying is in your simulation, you have the value of GDS, right? So how will you calculate RO simulated value? It is just 1 divided by GDS. Understanding? So whatever value you get, 1 divided by that will give you RO value. Uh, any problem in understanding this DC analysis now? You have understood how to uh, do this much, do this calculations and check it in the simulation. Any doubt over here, please positively confirm. Yes, sir. Yes? Yes. Okay, good. So after calculating your uh, DC parameters, then you have to go to your CS amplifier uh, mid frequency model. So I am not going into detail. If you analyze the circuit, this is common source amplifier with bypass capacitor CS. So with bypass capacitor, the RS value will be gone, short circuit. So the formula will be AV is equal to minus GM into RO parallel to capital RD parallel to RL. So in my case, RO value was 237, 237 kilo ohms. RD was 4.7 K. RL was 2.2 K. So RD parallel to RL came out to be 1.49 in my case, and uh, here uh, RO parallel to this combination will give you 1.489 kilohertz, kilo, kilo ohms. So this time multiply with G again as 4.65 minus 4.65. So from here I can determine V out. V out will be AV into V in. I know the value of uh, gain. I know the value of V in. I can calculate V out easily by multiplying that. So I got the V out to be minus 3.72 volt. So you can once you get it, you put it in the table. So as you can see, slight variation will be there that is expected with bypass capacitor. So your theoretical values of V 3.72 simulated was minus 3.68, that is quite close. Practical gain was minus 4.65, and the simulated gain. So that's also quite close. So this is how you perform the experiment for with bypass capacitor. You have to take two readings, one for 800 millivolt peak to peak, other for one volt peak to peak. Okay. And why I say there is a negative sign? There is a negative sign with this graph. I will get peak to peak value, which is, I mean, uh, input and output, which is out of phase. So let me show it to you again. Transient part, so I'll simulate, I'll run, I'll plot input and I plot output. As you can see, they are clearly out of phase with each other. So when they are out of phase, uh, consider the V out value negative and the gain will be negative subsequently. Now let me show you quickly the calculations for without bypass capacitor. So what I will do, I'll remove the wire and I run the same circuit. No DC calculations will remain the same. So as you can see, the uh, waveforms are symmetric now, more often symmetric. Earlier they were not symmetric. Okay, the positive peak and negative peak were not same, but now they are same. Okay, 
so uh, uh, without the bypass capacitor the circuit is more stable but reduced gain so let me check how much is the gain over here the gain is reduced it's now let me just max minimize the screen and then check the gain again so i'll view over here i'll go to spice error log and i'll check the gain value okay so i kept the value of uh, input as 800 millivolts only but i got the value of yes minus 034 so here it is viewout value simulated is minus 0.9034 and the gain is minus 1.1301 okay so that is the value of simulated gain which i am getting okay. to check the theoretical gain i'll following right if any step if not clear please let me theoretic is not getting you to this is the formula v out upon v in actually it could be v in sorry for that let me change it over here it is v out upon v in in this case v out upon v in is given by minus of okay so v out upon v in is minus of ro parallel to rl parallel to r uh, parallel to rd parallel to rl we have already determined this uh, you know as 1.489 in the early analysis and uh, divided by 1 upon gm plus re so uh, re nahi rs sorry again this will be rs so that's the formula whatever value you got for ro rd rl gm substitute it over here and after substituting i got the value of av as minus 1.128 okay and the unit is it has no unit but you can write volt per volt okay because it is v out upon uh, you know v in only so it is volt per volt that, that is no unit itself then you can calculate the voltage gain it is coming out to be i mean v out value v out value will be av into v in which is coming out to be minus 0.9024 okay and if i check the Table again, without bypass capacitor, I am getting quite close. See, without bypass capacitor, the values will be very, very close, right? V out value theoretical is minus zero point nine nine zero two, and simulated is minus zero point nine zero three. Okay, and the theoretical gain is uh, minus one point one two eight, and simulated is minus one point one three zero one. 